tonight. I'll turn it down a little bit so you can actually hear me talking. I noticed that was a, an issue in the last one that I was listening to just to kind of make sure it wasn't too bad this time. Hello Chris, how's it going man? So I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes, see if more people get in here. If not, that's cool and I'll just go along with it. But until then, we're just waiting. Oh. How well did you guys weather the storm, Chris? I have to say, this song, I really like it, but I don't really understand the lyrics that well. I might have to look it up. Hello, Vonda. No, we got no tornado that came over your house. I didn't know you guys had a tornado come over the house. That's crazy. I'm glad you guys are okay. <laughs> we didn't really get anything. We got some wind, and we got a little bit of flooding, but most of the flooding's gone now. We didn't lose power, we didn't lose internet, but it was just like really rainy and then um, kind of windy. <laughs> I was stuck in the house, which of course I didn't like because I'm usually outside two, three, four times a day, believe it or not. <laughs> so, running around with our dog or whatever, just doing work in the yard. I like being outside. And I couldn't really go outside. I did a lot of live streaming on Instagram and Twitter. So, if you guys aren't following me on both of those, uh, the name there is Sleepy Blue Kitty. And I put all kinds of different stuff on there. You guys don't lose power either? Good, I'm glad. Kind of need it with that baby. <laughs> Alright, so the song is over. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. So this is kind of a mix of travel tips and uh, like just safety sort of tips. So, like I was saying, Hurricane Irma turned into Tropical Storm Irma and then hit us. Now downtown Charleston seems to have gotten it the worst. Yeah. So, <clears throat> just be praying for those guys. Uh, I know it probably hasn't drained yet. I don't know if you have been downtown. Anybody who's watching can tell us maybe if they've drained or not. Hey Earl, how's it going man? So I'm happy you guys are all here. Hey Justin, how's it going man? Glad you're here to do a little talk. Um, this hurricane. Oh, another one, George. Hey, man. <laughs> so, once it turned to a tropical storm, or once it turned to a category one, we decided to stay. Hello, Don. And then once we decided decided to stay, we then had to figure out like what it, what exactly we needed to do to stay. So. Uh, Basically, we just watched it, and that's really all you can do until you decide what you're going to do as far as stay or leave. We decided to stay, we watched it, we're looking at it, we're like, oh my gosh, we can we can weather this, it will be fine. Uh, one moment that I did jump on was I'm sitting here in my living room, where, I'm, where I am right now, and I start to hear like these little bumps over my head, and I realize it's the trees that are over us and the wind is pushing them down and tapping on the uh, the roof. So, had that a couple of times. 
basically all that happened to us though was the trees <clears throat> got a real good cleaning out. So everything just sort of, all those loose branches I've been trying to get out of the trees and all that stuff came all out into my yard. So it looks like my yard needs a good sweep. <laughs> So that's basically all that happened for us in Irma. So I was sitting around and I was thinking about all this stuff. Oh, Justin says, luckily he was off yesterday. He got curious and drove around during the storm. A bunch of times I had to turn around because of flooded areas. We almost did that as well. We almost got out and went driving around. Anytime it lulled, we were like, oh, let's go. Let's go see, you know, what it looks like out there. Uh, but we didn't actually get out and do anything. Mostly, like, when storms roll in like that, Brendan starts to feel a little sick and things. So we just stayed. I was opening the door all the time. I was like, hey, what's going on out there? What's going on? I wanted to know. And uh, I don't know. I was just really curious. <laughs> Uh, so, while I'm sitting in the house, going through, you know, Irma, and, uh, storms like that made me think of travelers who get caught in the storms and how we can all keep safe when we're doing that. So, I've said before in episodes like this, um, these kinds of things are a great reason to have a mobile house, right? You, your loved ones, the things that are special to you can leave before it happens. But then I was thinking, let's say you don't want to leave or you've actually traveled to this area during this non-peak time in order to save money. And I was like, well, dang, okay, so what, what if that's not what's going on? So here are three things that I was thinking of you should probably always have, but especially in the south because you just never know when you're going to need it. I've been in situations where we didn't need, it wasn't a storm, but there was no, you know, there was no clean water. So first one I put on there is clean water. And this seems strange because in cases like this, you're surrounded by water, but this water is no good, right? Even today when we were cleaning up, Brendan and I saw like, excuse me, oil and things floating on the water. We've had storms where we come out and there's like dead animals in the water. <laughs> so you really kind of want to be cautious about the water. So you always want to have clean water around. So we always keep a couple of gallons around for just in case and keep it s stored somewhere cool so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, when I was younger, this, uh, this is also one of the first things my dad taught me. You should always have clean water readily available for you to use for whatever reason. Mostly for us it was for the car when he was teaching me this. <laughs> but there have been a few times when we were stuck and having that water came in handy. George says, fill your tub. Yes, fill your tub. You can fill your tub. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of it, but as long as you've been cleaning your toilet, and if it comes to that, that water is clean water as long as you've been cleaning it. Uh, <clears throat> there's lots of different ways you can fill up your sinks, your tub, you can, if it comes to it, use your toilet water if you must. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. So the second thing, cash, and I know I've said this before and I will be saying it again. Cash is king wherever you go. Even after storms and after power is restored, there will be many places that cannot use your card. Today we went out and we went around to see what was open and how bad the flooding was and we went to a Hardee's and their card machine did not work. <laughs> so it's a good thing we had cash. And that's just also from experience working in fast food chains and then experience like today where their card machine was down. The card readers always seemed to be the last thing to come back whenever I was working. So this one, this last one, is not something I hear one part but I don't hear the other too often. And that's fire starter and emergency food. So I lump these two together because they go hand in hand. So no matter where you are, your ability to start a fire and heat anything, including yourself, warm yourself up, is a must. Many places sell fire starters, like it's actually for your fireplace, but if you, you can buy those and start fires outside, 
uh, to cook your food, keep you warm, stuff like that. It's about five bucks and they never expire. It doesn't go bad. And lighters are super cheap. So it's always good to have that on hand. Keep that little fire starter, have a lighter with you. So you can do that. You can always warm your food, warm yourself, dry your clothes. That's very important, especially out here where it's wet all the time. So emergency foods can vary from like military MREs. Have you guys ever had those? Those are interesting. I've had those before. I've never tried civilian MREs, but supposedly they're the, they're very, they're the same, but they're different. Like they're freeze dried stuff basically, but they taste different. Uh, beans and rice and canned soups, okay? So if you have these things, you won't go hungry. You'll be fine. MREs last forever. Even after they expire, they're still good. I can remember when I was a kid eating MREs for snacks. And they're not, they're not terrible, but they're not great. But you won't be hungry either. <laughs> so there you go. George, what's a mountain pack? I've never heard of that before. So while he's um, while he's answering, I've got to find this is an example of the this is the knife I keep with me all the time. It's my favorite. Let me let me get it. It's this one, and I call him the Marine, not very originally, because it says Marines on there. Hoorah! I love me some Marines. And this has this edge here. This will help you cut through wood or clothes or anything else. And it also has this straight edge that I love. I love this knife. It's nice and hefty, so it's not going to break. And I'm a big lighter person, not because I smoke, but just because fire, right? So there's that. Um, I always keep these two with me in my backpack. And I like to carry, this is part of the reason why I like to carry a backpack versus like a purse. So this storm brought to mind many of the lessons that my dad taught me as a kid who he knew his kids loved to ramble. Always carry a knife, always carry a lighter and some water and you'll be in pretty good shape. So like I was saying, this is why I prefer backpacks to purses and why you are always see me with a knife or two around. So guys, let me know how you weathered the storm. Some of you already have. That's awesome. I am so glad all of you guys have gone and through it pretty well. And what are some emergency and safety ideas that you follow? Like I said, we always have water. I always have the marine on me somewhere. So uh, just let me know, guys. Okay, until next time, I will see you guys next week. Bye!